Welcome everybody on Zoom and, and in person here for another exciting announcement, which is the uh, finalization of an extension for Carlos Vela. I think all of you who have been around the club know what Carlos means to LAFC and to LA and to this league. So it's with incredible excitement that, excitement that we are announcing that he will be with us for at least the next couple of seasons, maybe beyond. And it's an incredibly gratifying thing to say because it's something that we were always hopeful we would get to with Carlos from day one. For me, Carlos has been the best player in this league for a large part of his time here. And we are incredibly excited to see what he will continue to develop, to deliver to LAFC, to our supporters, to our city. And we are incredibly grateful, both myself, our coaching staff, and our owners to continue our relationship with, with Carlos, his representatives. And it's an incredibly exciting moment for LAFC to announce this today. And that excitement is mainly, because, mainly due to the fact that we believe Carlos will help us deliver on our ambition to win championships here in LA. No, uh, quieres que responda respond en español, ok. Uh, bueno, no voy a hablar de las cosas, los detalles del, del contrato, solo para decir que tenemos un acuerdo ya con, con Carlos y para mí los detalles de los contratos deben mantenerlos privados. Eh, pero para mí no, es que cuando... Bueno, yo no leo las, las cosas en la prensa y todo, pero de, desde lo que oí y he oído en, la, en los últimos meses, un, algo que sugiere que él no está contento o nosotros no estamos contentos, eso nunca fue la realidad. La realidad es que desde el primer momento no estoy sorprendido que estoy aquí diciendo que tenemos un acuerdo. Los dos lados, uh, fue el objetivo de los dos lados a continuar nuestra relación porque Carlos está muy contento aquí y nosotros obviamente estamos contentos con él. Tenemos un entrenador y, y un grupo de jugadores que tiene mucho fe en lo que Carlos puede uh, darnos y el, el hecho que va a continuar con eso es una, uh, un momento muy positivo por el club. Yeah, I, I guess I would say yes and no. No, you know, I, um, myself, Steve, quite a few of us played later into our 30s. And you do understand there are differences, and for sure there are. And I think the only frustration that Carlos shares with us is his availability at times with injuries and what have you. We feel like the way we can manage him, the fact that we have a deeper roster, that we can manage his minutes and his load in a way that sets him up for success, that... Carlos is such a gifted player that even as he adapts to different positional roles and responsibilities, that he is still an incredibly effective player. And I think we saw that Sunday he played through the middle, whereas when earlier he might have played wide, but he's just as effective. He was instrumental in the first goal that helped win us the game. He is such a talented player when he can get on the ball and dictate the tempo of the game. And he's He's such a talented player that he could do, do so in different ways, and whether that's being on the end of things and scoring or whether it's setting up a goal like he did on Sunday. It, either way, it's very effective for our group, and we feel like we have uh, complementary pieces around him, both new additions that, may, that, that are still to come, the ones that we already have, and the ones that we're bringing in and have announced recently as well, we think are a good complement to, to Carlos. How has he evolved and grown as a, as a leader? He didn't come in. He wasn't the first captain of the club. It was Lawrence Simon, but obviously he's adapted and adopted that role. How have you seen him change and grow into that? Yeah, I'll just give a quick anecdote, which I don't like to share too much of what happens backstage because it's, it's the player's information, but I trust they won't mind me sharing. 
when I announced to the group that Carlos had extended, it was like a standing ovation. So I think that says a lot about who Carlos is as a player and also as a person. I do not want to characterize him as a general militant type leader, but he leads by example and he leads by the fact that he's been the best player that we've had in our history. And I hope that the young guys and other guys see that example and they seek to unseat that title, unseat him from that title at some point. But Carlos, I think, is often misunderstood as either a difficult guy to deal with. And I have I find that having dealt with him on a daily basis for now four plus years, that couldn't be farther from the truth. And he's a really likable guy. He never asks for special treatment. He wants to be one of the guys. He is one of the guys. And for that, I believe the guys were incredibly excited when we when we shared the news. Yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a good question. And I think what I would say is that every decision we make is we understand the interpendent nature of these decisions. And with the extension of Carlos, with the new players that are coming on board, all of that is taken into account. So that is not a worry. Is that something that we thought about? Yes, but that is why we do extra diligence on what type of people we are bringing into this building. I think the types of players we're bringing is there for all to see, and that's up to us to decide how that, how that works on the field. But if we did not have confidence in the personalities and the culture and the, the dynamics that that would bring on the personal level, it wouldn't work on the field. So that is why we do that extra diligence to ensure that the types of people we bring into this building are complementary to the goals that we have as an organization. John, do you mind sharing with us a timeline of the, the two new players? When do you expect them to arrive in Los Angeles and play for the first time? Sure. In English or Spanish? No, in English. Okay. My, my, where I'm better. Um, the exact specifics, I don't quite know. What I, what I can say is that our, our window only opens in the days prior to the Galaxy match, so that will be the earliest state which both new players, uh, I'm assuming you're referring to Chiellini and Bale, that they will be available. We still have some of the immigration process to go through, but all things being well, we want them here as soon as possible so that they can train with the group to prepare for that match on the 8th. John, um, obviously before adding Karen and Giorgio, the team was already supporters of leader. Mm -hmm. It's LA since the beginning, since the founding of this club. You guys are talking about being the best team, mm -hmm. winning titles. Now with the additions, the pressure is on. Mm -hmm. How's that internal talking about how to manage expectations? So the objectives and the pressure hasn't changed. And that was the same last year. It's the same this year. It's the same in January of this year. And it's the same in July of this year. We want to win, and that pressure is a part of being a player, a coach, an executive at this club. We want to win. We are hopeful that we're putting a team in position to succeed this year. I do want to make sure that I, I sit on that point that you say as to where we are currently, and that is testament to this group. And these additions are meant to complement a group that we really believe in. So these decisions are take this group into account first and foremost. I look at these as like, the, this is the foundation. Now what pieces can we add to get us closer to that ambition of winning Supporter Shield, MLS Cup, qualifying for Champions League, all of the things that we want to do, beating the Galaxy, um, uh, beating Club America, all of the things that we know are important to us as a club, us as competitors, to our supporters, to our city. These decisions that we're making and now we're making sure that we continue with with Carlos, the objectives, the pressure, the goals never change. That is what it means to be a part of this club. I have a follow-up about the group. Sure. Um, talking about that, obviously the, the spotlight is on Carlos, it's going to be on Bell, it's going to be on Giorgio. But now there's a, with mid-season, mm -hmm. there's an all-star game. Guys like, for example, Ilya Sanchez, Chiqui Palacio, especially Ilya, who's been the captain after Carlos, I feel like he's an MVP from runner. How do you guys make sure that they are not at least on the media side, like in the shadow. Yeah, I, I can't 
control what the media says. All I can do is speak in a completely honest way as to the appreciation I have for not just Ely. I put a lot of our additions, Ryan Hollingshead, Max, uh, Franco Escobar, a lot of the additions we made. And then you mentioned one of the young players who we think has made great strides this year in Chiqui Palacios. I can talk about Cifuentes. I can talk about the hopes we have for Brian now that he's back from, from injury fall. For us, all I can control is making sure they know how valued they are in this building. Um, I know the coach, Steve, does a great job of communicating that with them. And this is not, this club is far bigger than any one player, two player, three players. It's about the group in the locker room and how they can come together, hopefully, and, and bring this club a championship. It's going to take about two or three more. John, in Espanol, ¿cómo fue el acercamiento con Gareth Bell? ¿Y cuándo se incorporaría aquí? ¿Y qué le gustó? Okay. Do you want me to finish the question on Carlos before I talk about Gareth? Uh, do you not care? We'll go ahead. We'll, okay. We'll just do one more question. Uh, bueno, el proceso fue lo siguiente. Inmediatamente después del partido en que calificó... ¿Cómo se llama en español? ¿Jales? Gales. Gales. Uh, Wales. Uh, para, el, para el Mundial estuvimos en contacto con los representantes de, de Gareth y empezamos una conversación en que tu, uh, hablamos de la oportunidad aquí, una oportunidad única en mi opinión de lo que presenta el AFC como una oportunidad por, por Gareth y, 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 y también y tan importante lo que quiere y necesita Gareth en, la, en el próximo paso de, tu, de su carrera y fue una combinación que le eh, alinea perfectamente por lo que quiere él para preparar para el Mundial y el próximo paso de tu carrera y lo que necesitamos como un grupo y cómo cabe en nuestro sistema que puede darnos en la cancha. Together, of some big personalities in this locker room, and, and kind of what that'll do for the club here. Um, obviously, they come from their own story backgrounds. Um, curious to hear your perspective on just kind of what that does for a group uh, that's still coming together in many ways with so many new pieces. Yeah, I'll start with the last comment you made that it is still coming together, but what I would say is that it has come together in a really strong way already, and that's credit again to the, the group of players and the staff. And, and I think. I touched on this, Jonathan, but I think for the very reason you asked the question is why we are incredibly intentional about who, what personalities we bring into this building. And I think that is, as much as anything, why I think we have found, and look, we weren't, the goal wasn't to be in first place in June. And I think and you all know that, but we've put ourselves in a good position in large part because of the continuity of the group, the camaraderie of the group. You can see it in games like Sunday when it's hot and it's tough game to play in and Red Bull throws everything at you and this group stands up to the fight and you see it in how many times we've come from behind. And that only happens when you have the right personality and character in the group. Now, obviously, Carlos is already here. That will continue. Chiellini is arguably the greatest competitor we've seen in our game in the last 15 years. Gareth Bale is a guy that's won five Champions League trophies, has just taken his country to a historic achievement in qualifying for a World Cup. So for us, that only adds to what we believe is already a strong group in terms of the leadership, what it means to compete every day, show up every day, to be a professional. And for us, we do have a portion of our group that still needs to learn how to do that. And for us, we were intentional in bringing the guys in that can help show them the way. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate your time. Is that it? Do you want to do these two hands up? I've got time. Or are you going to? All right. All right. Steve can wait. Steve, uh, then Alicia, go ahead. You've got more in Thanks, John. I do? Appreciate it. Huh. Uh, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Um, I wanted to ask about the timing of signing Carlos. Um, from my understanding, his contract was set to run out this week. Um, how close was it to him walking away from the team midseason? When did you know that this deal was going to be complete? Um, you know, is this something that came together pretty recently, or was this something that had been in the works for a while, and for whatever reason, it 
it only just now got announced. Yeah, thanks, Alicia. In my, I, I won't have the exact dates, but I would say the heavy lifting of the negotiation was done probably two months ago, and the rest of the time has been done ironing out minor details, which I never thought would get in the way of the deal. So for me, for Steve, for his planning purposes, this deal was as good as done a few months ago. Obviously, any negotiation that you go through, there are typically a lot of ups and downs, and it's a nonlinear process, but that wasn't the case here. As soon as we knew he wanted to stay, we wanted him to stay, then it just took a bit of time to iron out the details in in full transparency, the contract was only signed when we basically the day before we announced it. But for all intents and purposes, it was done. Great, thank you. You got it. Okay, now last question. question. Go to Fabrizio. Thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, John. I'm Fabrizio Dominguez from the Blue Deportes here in Mexico. Uh, about Carlos Vela, uh, in the months, months previously to this renewal, does the team uh, receive any offer? Carlos, or do you know if Carlos in uh, now these uh, last days received any offer from another team for him to join in, in, in uh, January, uh, and in a specific from Mexico? Do you know if uh, any team uh, get interest uh, from Carlos? Yeah, I I don't know is the short answer. The longer version of that is we were never going to receive an offer in the last six months because if he was going to leave, he would have left for free. I can't help but imagine almost every team in Mexico expressed interest and probably wanted him. But as I say, this conversation was always one of, you want to be here, we want you to be here, we'll work towards figuring that out. So that never came up in our conversations. But having said that, I I know there are Mexican teams that would have loved to have him, and not just in Mexico, but Carlos is a, a top-class player that would have drawn the interest from many clubs around the world. Thank you. You're welcome.